A former Bungie dev who worked on the original trilogy and crafted the Halo 2 online matchmaking experience recently came out online to talk about skill-based matchmaking. It's been a very hot topic, especially within the Halo community, as the Halo 3 players has been, well, competitive to say the least. But Max Huberman here, the guy behind Halo 2's online and Halo 3 online matchmaking in everything kind of experience, goes in depth about why he created the matchmaking system that he did and why these older games and their matchmaking systems felt so much more organic and fun compared to the modern day where it's very competitive or engagement based. And our boy went in depth. So let's see what he had to say. So if you guys like these type of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Best way to help out the channel, subscribe to keep yourself up to date with everything going on with Halo. Let's get right into it. Max starts out saying the ignorance here is frustrating. I see the mention of skill-based matchmaking component I designed for Halo 2 and 3. It's usually mentioned favorably, but then the outlier jumps in the claim that it can't work today. I disagree. Which makes this very interesting to find out what he has to say because I would honestly feel that the old school matchmaking system wouldn't work today. There's a reason why skill-based matchmaking exists today and why sh how strict it is. And that is because of engagement. If there was one thing you absolutely had to know, it would have to be Ridge. Looking for the best gift to give your loved ones? Look no further than Ridge. Shop the holiday sale by going to ridge.com slash KevinCoolX and get up to 30% off through December 20th. If you use my link, you can enter your email or SMS for a free chance to win a Ridge bundle worth $4,000, no purchase necessary. Ridge recently sent me their newest Hyper Lime wallet, key case, and water bottle. Ridge also has 30 plus colors and styles, including leather, if you like to go a more traditional route. The Ridge wallet expands to hold up to 12 cards, plus room for cash, while remaining slim as possible. Designed with RFID blocking materials that protect you from digital pitpocketers. Give Ridge a try with their 99 day risk-free trial that lets you give the perfect present worry free. You can send it back for a full refund if they don't like it. Again, use my link ridge.com slash Kevin to get yourself some sweet savings by December 20th. And thank you Ridge for sponsoring this video. And let's get right back into those details. If game companies didn't see an increase in engagement, they probably won't have these features put into place. But let's see what Max has to say about that. What I implemented cleanly divided the space into ranked and unranked matchmaking playlists. Ranked filtered opponents based on level. This was for when you wanted a competitive match. But even then, I intentionally allowed variability in the range of levels we matched you with. This variability was a topic of hot debate internally during development 20 years ago. Obviously, no one wants to get stopped continuously. On the flip side, it gets dull for most people continuously stopping others. However, it is fun having the upper hand sometimes. By intentionally allowing a range of skills to match together, we provided three experiences in ranked matchmaking. An easier one where you can kick butt, a harder one where you're likely outmatched, and an evenly matched one. My theory was that a good mix of three levels was ideal. Why not always evenly match people though? My reasoning was that these are actually the most stressful matches of the set. Sure, they're the most fun to watch for spectators, games come down to the wire. That's because the team that wins is the team that outperforms expectations. The failure of modern skill-based matchmaking, in my honest opinion, is that it is designed to maximize these perfect match scenarios and minimize others. When it's working, a majority of the games become super tight, super stressful. That's not fun for most players. Where's the variability? That's exactly what I think most people want. We don't want to have these super strict matches where it's like in Halo terms, 49 to 15 in a Team Slayer every single time. But you also don't want these matches where you get stomped on because you're the player who has to carry your team of lower skilled players. It feels like the design of a lot of these skill-based matchmaking systems are designed to keep you around a 50% win-loss ratio and not do super well in kill-death ratio like in Call of Duty, getting like a 1.5 kill-death ratio or about a 1 to keep you right around there. So these old stats that we used to flaunt, right, like I have a 3 to 1 kill-death ratio, my win rate is 75% or something like that, 
are stats that players use to flex with each other to kind of showcase their skill level and also inspire others to do better. With the current systems within the most popular matchmaking games out there, it doesn't really feel like you're in control of your situation and that most of it comes down to an algorithm. And if I win a match or do well, it feels more like, okay, well, the algorithm gave me a bone on that one to keep my engagement up, but then they're going to throw me right back into a sweaty, difficult game mode. But honestly, playing standard matchmaking like 4v4s when it comes to Halo 6v6 and Call of Duty, that it gets tiring. It gets stressful. I get worn down quite easily within these matches. I feel like I have to be on the top of my game at all times just to break even for kill death ratio wise. As someone who plays casually, not trying to go for any type of tournaments or anything like that, it becomes frustrating. Max continues on saying, the system I designed for ranked playlists ensures a healthy mix. Sure, it sucks watching your favorite team get their butt kicked, but it comes full circle when they're the ones kicking butt. Throw in tight, evenly matched games every so often, and that's a ton of fun. I haven't even gotten to unranked playlists yet. I designed these to not factor in skill slash level in the search for opponents. Yes, our engineers utilized the same code base and kept skill slash level as a search criteria, but we substantially deprioritized it in matchmaking. We also didn't track skill slash level globally, only per playlist. The net result was that unranked matchmaking allowed a very wide range of skill levels to match together for what everyone agreed at was casual, inconsequential, fun. Again, that's the way it should be, in my opinion. So for a game like Halo, they actually track your matchmaking rank. It's a hidden skill rank that you don't really see often when it comes to playing. It just tallies your score as a whole of what kind of player you are. So depending on how good you are in Team Slayer or how good you are in Big Team Battle or how good you are in rank, it will even out your score level to where you should be matching against similar skilled players no matter what playlist you're in. Now on paper, again, that makes sense. We've been talking about this within this video, but the problem is you play different playlists differently. You don't play Team Slayer for a competitive experience. I play Ranked Arena for a competitive experience that's why I turn my try hard pants on, you know, nice and tight, nice and sweaty right there where I try. And that's where I should be playing against the higher skilled players. But if I'm just playing Team Slayer or the Halo 3 refuel players as of recent, it should be a little bit more lax, a little more lenient because I play those playlists differently. I don't try to optimize my positioning or my shot or I'm trying to time every single power weapon and equipment that's on the map. I just kind of run around and shoot things. This is a really big issue with me when I play with my friends in real life or even my my brother who likes to play as well, he's a much lower skill player than I am because I put the time in, I've learned the game and I'm a much better player. For context, I'm like a low tier Onyx, high tier Diamond player when I really am at peak and he's like gold player. But whenever I'm playing with him, I bring the sweaties into the playlist and we just get our butts kicked because he's getting stomped I'm basically breaking even and we're losing most of our games. It's not a fun experience. I actually made a free alt account so I can play with my brother and friends so I don't bring in the sweaty players and it's actually been a really fun time. That shouldn't be the case. I shouldn't have to switch accounts and not make progression on my main account just so I can have fun with my friends. That's not skill issue either. That's just design issue. Continuing on, Max says, since the natural skill level distribution of players follows a bell curve, there are outliers inherit low skill and high skill players characterizing the high skill ones as sweaty teens hopped on monster energy is really disrespectful segregating high skill players from the population at large forces long wait times on them is a form of discrimination designers should strive to find a way that players of all skill levels can have fun together Casual, inconsequential, unranked matchmaking is one way. I dabbled with handicap settings and asymmetric game mode design as others. Game devs shouldn't take the easy way out and default to segregation though. There's far more that can be done. Derogatory views like this among game devs is a cop out and disservice to players. I think what Max was talking about when it comes to like the sweaty teens hopped up on it, monster energy being called sweaty players being disrespectful is kind of true because ultimately with these shooter games, you're playing to win. You want to win the game, right? There's an inherent competitiveness with a style game like a first person shooter. And I touched on this in a previous video where I feel like the people who are really suffering from skill based matchmaking are they're probably your most dedicated, most engaged players because those are the people who took the time to learn the gameplay mechanics or understand how to improve at the game to 
only then be punished by strict skill-based matchmaking. Now, most of the talk is around unranked experiences because people just want to hop on and play it. Because the skill-based matchmaking when it comes to ranked, especially in Halo, it totally works as intended. It actually does a really great job. But I'm literally matching the same caliber of players in an unranked situation, and I don't go to unranked for the same type of experience. You see many people out here, especially YouTubers, like one in particular, Mimplus, talking about how he just can't find games because of skill-based matchmaking. He had this issue back in Halo 5 as well. He has to join people's parties who are based in the United States, and once they search, then they can find games with him. There must be some form of data or information that's going internally through publishers and game developers to show like why you need to have this type of skill-based matchmaking that's currently in most popular shooters out there right now, because like I said earlier, if it was detrimental to the gameplay experience, making people drop off and not play, well, you know they wouldn't have it in there. And this is coming from Max Hoberman, the guy who designed the matchmaking experience for Halo 2 and Halo 3, and allegedly behind Tatanka, the rumored Battle Royale-like mode that was supposed to come for Halo, but it's been on the back burner for some time now. One game in particular where people really complain about skill-based matchmaking is with the Call of Duty franchise, but Activision just released this information about Call of Duty saying that it set records for the highest player engagement out of any Modern Warfare game. And Modern Warfare Zombies is the most played co-op mode in the Modern Warfare franchise. I feel like skill-based matchmaking also kind of robs you opportunities of having and like core memory moments that you had with gaming. The one example I can come to my mind is classic Modern Warfare 2 back in 2009. The first time I got a nuke, that will always stay in my memory forever. And I feel like if there was current skill-based matchmaking in the way that it is in the game right now, I don't think I would ever have a nuke. As a casual player of the Call of Duty franchise that I feel like I would just be stomped on eventually by skill-based matchmaking that wouldn't allow me to go on these crazy high streaks to go like, wow, what an amazing game. One of my favorite gaming modes of all time just happened. Like currently right now it's engagement based like I talked about previously where it's not every game is str strictly sweaty, but more based on going in and out of different skill brackets. What are your thoughts on skill-based matchmaking? Let me know in the comments down below. Check out this video right here where I was talking about skill-based matchmaking recently within Halo Infinite especially the Halo 3 playlist. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.